This inn is a modest country tavern right on the main road. It catches a certain amount of the Delaware traffic and some of the trade going west to the frontier country. We've picked this town because active recruiting for the Continental Army is going on here. And this has aroused the deepest feelings pro and con on the question of war and independence. Pennsylvania, one of the proprietary colonies, belongs to the middle group that is about evenly divided between loyalists and rebels. Uh, sir, how do you stand, sir, on independence for the colonies? I haven't made up my mind. What business are you in, sir? The feed and grain. What if the war comes here? I will go there. <laughs> A gentleman, I suppose you boys know what we're trying to find out. Oh, these boys are volunteers waiting for Captain Graydon. Have you signed up yet? Waiting to. What do your parents say? My father's just waiting until the fall harvest gets in and he's going to join me. And what about you, son? I'm going with Tom. What does your father say? Indians killed my father. And your mother? French killed her. And now you're going to fight the British? The way I feel, I don't want anybody coming in here with guns telling me what to do. And you, sir, I suppose you're from western Pennsylvania? Oh, yes, sir, from way past the fort at Pittsburgh. And I've come here with this, to join up with General Washington. Why are you for independence? Well, sir, out where I come from, where there's nothing but trees, far as you can see. Well, it seems foolish to think of ourselves as anything but free and for ourselves. Ah, it's the wilderness that makes us independent. Neighbor! Sir? Here I am, as I said I would be, recruiting for the Continental Army to follow under General Washington and chase the Hessians and the Redcoats from our shore. Here I am with money to pay and a gun for every patriot. Now step right up to Captain Graydon and sign your name and off we'll go. How dare you, sir, recruit for a rebellion? Why, you seem like a gentleman and officer. How dare you, sir, stand in the way of the will of the free and independent American nation. I, yeah. am. I will write my name down for it. Right. That's I here you are, sir. Now, make an exit. Hurry up now. You don't have to read it. You don't have to read it. You can't read anyway. Why, you're a dirty dog of a liberty boy. Why, you... Before we continue with more important history, we need to correct some common misconceptions. Although there were people who did wear fur hats during that period, Daniel Boone preferred a very different style. Daniel Boone was not the first explorer to cross the Appalachian Mountains or to see Kentucky. By 1776, there had been French explorers along the Ohio River, the Mississippi River, the Missouri River, and as far west as the Rocky Mountains. What Daniel did was to follow Native American trails and blaze the way for permanent settlers in Kentucky. And uh, the Indians used to follow the buffalo into Kentucky because that was one of their main sources of food and clothing and they used virtually everything, every, every piece of the animal was used in some you know, shape or form. When the settlers came, Boone and you know Simon Kenton and Wetzel and all of them, they naturally followed the buffalo too. And so when the settlers came through, there was basically a ready-made road, <laughs> and you had your choice of either coming down the river, you know, onto the Licking, and then going on further south, or if you were coming by land, you could easily use the buffalo trace because it was pounded so doggone hard, nothing would grow. You know, you figure 20,000 buffalo moving south from the river to you know the bluegrass there ready-made road. <laughs> so there you have it, and it's still a road today. These fellows, Butler's Rangers, were the highest paid military regiment in the British Army at the time, and they worked closely with uh, the North American natives. What we did was go out and support the various tribes that were working against the Virginians and the Pennsylvanians. The irony of it is the vast majority of the British uh, forces, as in the, the Butler's Rangers, were Virginians, Pennsylvanians, New Yorkers, and that sort. Um, some of them were rogues. Some of them were decent men. They were just drawing the king's shilling. 
Pasai, we are Nanothu. We are great warriors. We fight for the king. Shawnee. The British then followed the French and tried to take over the entire area. The Americans, the Virginians, the, the, the long knives is what uh, my Shawnee brother would call them. And they're not speaking of their swords. They're speaking of this butcher knife here. That's the long knife. That's the nickname of the Virginians. And this fine fellow gave it up reluctantly. So while General Washington and the Continental Army were fighting the British in New Jersey, New York, and New England, we find that Daniel Boone and others had begun to establish forts. In Kentucky and throughout the Appalachian region. There were two forts established in Kentucky at that time. One called Boonesboro and the other called Harrodsburg. Spelling was different back then. Yeah, well, I'm just a, just a settler mm -hmm. here on the frontier, uh, waiting for the Indians to come. Um, my name is David Glikiken, and Glikiken it means gun sight. Um, I'm a Delaware warrior of uh, 1775. We have come here with our brothers, the, the Shawanese, or Shawnees, uh, to attack this fort and try and get these, these settlers out of our hunting grounds. They're here illegally, so we have come here to drive them away. I'm just a young guy, an orphan. I'm a hunter out of the fort. I like to uh, just hang out, do some spy work when Indians are around during Indian season. Just try to keep the fort supplied with me, just hanging out. How far are you down there working? Oh, I'm, I'm uh, putting up the... The men would have to go out and hunt. The women had to cook, clean, do chores, and people had to make their own tools, which is why they had a blacksmith. What the frontier did have to offer was freedom and opportunity. But what they're coming for is fruits of the forest, and I'm not talking about apples. Uh, the fruits of the forest that I mean would be fur, especially beaver, and deer hides, the ginseng, which the Indians are trading to the French who are trading it to the Chinese. Um, it's a very rich place, the rich black loamy topsoil underneath um, of that uh, forest canopy. If they weren't hunting or farming or watching out for Indians, the people on the frontier still had to go about daily life. It's for lunch. Looks like we're fixing a lot of stuff here. We're fixing a lentil soup, actually. It's these strange beans the Indians grow.